The key to success with hand tools is a sharp tool. After sharpening, people think you have to strop your blade to get the sharpest edge possible. This is a method where you squirt some finely ground compound on a piece of leather and stroke a sharpened tool. And because it looks shiny, it must be sharp, right? Or are people giving you bad advice? In this video, I will be doing an experiment on the differences between stropping versus sharpening, and by the end of it, you will change the way you sharpen your tools. Here, we have two identical plain iron ground to 25 degree bevel. I sharpen both blades with 1000, 4000, and 8000 grit. In order to know just how sharp these blades are, I'm using this industrial edge tester. It works by placing one of these test clips in this contraption that sits on top of the instrument. Then, using the blade, you can carefully cut the little string. Based on how much force it takes to cut it, we can tell how sharp an edge is. Lower the number, sharper the edge. For example, here is a utility razor that scored 132 with the tester, and our results fall squarely in line with the manufacturer provided scale. For the actual experiment, I'll do five test cuts at various sections of the blade and then average it to get a baseline sharpness. We get pretty similar results with both blades scoring at 106 and 109.4. Of course, the numbers are going to vary slightly based on many factors, not the least of which is me. Just know that I put an honest effort in making sure the conditions are as ideal and identical as possible. This is not a 3M laboratory, it's a garage. I realize that most of you don't have a specialty sharpness testing machine in your shop to gauge the sharpness of your tools. If you can effortlessly shave hair with it, or can easily slice through paper with those crispy whispering sounds, it's sharp enough for woodworking. Okay, so now that we have an established baseline, I will mount each blade on a hand plane and set the depth to take three thousandths of an inch shaving and take 25 passes on a three feet long cherry. Why cherry? It's a nice middle of the ground hardwood and I have lots of it. So after 25 passes, which is a total of 75 linear feet, I am checking the sharpness of both blades at five different sections of the blade. On average, both fared about the same at 121 and 120.2. This is to be expected because both blades are identical at this point and we have not done any stropping yet. I will put the blades back on the plane without any resharpening and repeat the same process at 50, 75, and 100 passes of shavings. So here are the results of the two identical blades dulling over 300 linear feet of shavings each. On average, it went from a sharpness score of sub 110 to a score of around 130. Keep in mind, the higher score equates to a duller blade. Now, this is where things get interesting. I will take one of the blades and resharpen it on 8,000 grit stone. You will notice this blade has a hollow grind that allows me to freehand sharpen without an old timer muscle memory of Rob Cosman. I did a video on this hollow grind method if you want to learn more. Resharpening the blade on the stone took five full strokes to get it from 130.6 to baseline sharpness of 110.8. Then I took the second blade and resharpened it on a leather stropping board using Tormac honing compound. I like this compound over the red, white, green jewelers compound because it cuts much, much faster. It took 25 strops to take the blade from 131 to a sharper baseline of 112. With both blades baselined, I once again go to town shaving a whole lot of cherry and take measurements at 25, 50, 75, and 100 passes. I sincerely hope this is worth it. Here are the results after just one iteration of stropping versus sharpening. You can see the average sharpness of the 8000 grit stone resharpened blade mimics pretty closely to the first control experiment while the stropped blade has a much higher score each step of the way. That means after just one stropping session, this blade is dulling quicker for the same amount of shavings being taken. Of course, this is just one stropping session. So what happens if we resharpen these again? I'm glad you asked. 
This time, the 8000 grit stone sharpening process took seven strokes to get to baseline sharpness of 99.4. Um, so because the last one took five strokes, I thought I'd go two more strokes than before. And in this case, I kind of overshot it and got a wee bit sharper than our baseline. Sorry, I'm human. The stropping blade was, however, a different story. It took 35 strokes on a freshly loaded leather with honing compound to get it back to baseline sharpness of 112. If you're keeping count, the first one took 25 strokes and this one took 35 strokes. In fact, before I share the results of the shaving tests, let me show you the summary of effort it took to resharpen the blades because one of the reasons I stopped this experiment at five resharpening sessions instead of my originally planned 10 is because I could not get the stropped blade back to baseline sharpness. If you like to strop your blade, how many times do you strop it before going back to work? How about 170? Because that's how many strops it took for the last resharpening method. I don't know about you, but I would never normally strop my blade 170 times if I didn't have a way to accurately measure just how sharp the blade is supposed to be, which means I would be working with a dull blade and not really know it. On the other hand, resharpening on the 8000 grit stone, I was able to achieve baseline or better results with just five to 13 strokes. At the end of this process, the stropped blade, while looking shiny, you can see just how much of the light bends at the very tip of the blade. Because leather is a squishy material, even with moderate pressure, stropping causes a rounding of the bevel that effectively increases the angle of your plane or chisel. While I do not have the tools to properly measure the angle of this blade, just listen to the sound of the stone sharpened version versus the stropped blade. There is a very different pitch and it takes a lot more effort on my part to take shavings with the stropped blade. Okay, back to the results you're actually here to see. As you look at the graph from left to right, we go from baseline 25, 50, 75, and 100 shavings. And on the Y scale, we have the sharpness score where the higher number means more dull blade. The bottom cluster in blue are the results of the 8,000 grit resharpened blade. You can see for the most part, as the blade gets used more and more, it gets duller. However, resharpening after resharpening on the 8,000 grit stone, the results are pretty consistent with each other. Interestingly enough, the yellow line embedded within the blue cluster is our baseline test for the stropping blade that had not yet been stropped. All of the yellow and red colors are the stropped resharpening results. If you look at the lines from the baseline to 25 shavings, there is a dramatic increase in the dullness of the blade and they continue to get more and more dull as you take more shavings. So what did we learn here today? My suspicion was right. A stropped blade dulls much faster than a stone sharpened blade. And it takes a lot more number of stropping to get it back to prime sharpness. And even when it does, it gets dull a lot faster. If you're in the middle of a project and you just need to top off the edge to keep working, it might be okay to strop it once or twice. But no matter the case, you're going to get better sharpness and edge retention with a blade that has been sharpened on a stone. In order to make stone sharpening easier, I highly recommend you hollow grind your tools that you can learn on my next video here. I hope you learned something. I know I'm throwing out all of my stropping materials. I will see you on the next one.